So, Dr. Lee, can you just share with us the reasons behind your doing this study? Well, the reasons ultimately came down to the fact that uh, when we talked with our clinical colleagues, there was a, a great deal of uncertainty and difficulties they were experiencing to diagnose patients with eosinophil esophagitis. Uh, so, I mean, the primary reason was, you know, how can we help our clinical colleagues? But what became really obvious very quickly was the fact that a lot of the solutions that we generated for diagnoses of our mouse models of human disease turn out not to have counterparts uh, in the clinical world. So not only could we help patients, but we could also create new diagnostics to help clinical colleagues uh, to look at these patients in a different way and perhaps uh, a better way uh, for a more definitive diagnosis. That sounds fascinating. Now tell us a little bit about the methods that you utilized in this research project. Now what's nice about this particular project is we used really two novel methods. The first one, we had to develop uh, a specific reagent uh, against eosinophils, to identify eosinophils. And we chose to make uh, antibodies against the conserved granule proteins, in particular the eosinophil peroxidase protein stored in the granules of eosinophils. The problem was, in the past, this protein is so well conserved that no animal would make an antibody against a protein that we introduced into that animal simply because their own protein was too much like uh, the protein we introduced. We solved that problem by using a uh, knockout animal that we created that was deficient for eosinophil peroxidase. Now, once we had this novel reagent, the other, the other interesting the twist that we were able to do is we were able to develop a uh, numerical algorithm, a quantitative measure where we can look not only at eosinophil infiltration into tissue biopsies at a very sensitive level, but we could also measure things like degranulation or eosinophil activation. So we can quantify both the number of eosinophils at a very uh, reproducible and a very sensitive way, but we can also add measures of like degranulation, what kind of activities were those eosinophils engaged in in those tissues. So now let's talk about the interesting part. What are the highlights from your study? Well, what we did is we had our pathology and clinical colleagues identify uh, patients who were diagnosed either as eosinophil esophagitis patients, patients with uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease, mm -hmm. or normal control patients. Uh, we were blinded uh, to those patients, as were the pathologists. Uh, those patients were then subsequently graded uh, by traditional guideline-driven diagnostic criteria. Uh, at the same time, those patients were subject to our new eosinophil peroxidase antibody assay. We were able to identify correctly those patients that had eosinophil esophagitis versus GERD versus normals, uh, almost in a one-to-one -one way with traditional guideline-driven uh, diagnostic procedures. But more importantly, we were able to identify patients that previously did not meet guidelines. They did not have the required number of eosinophils uh, to be characterized as an eosinophil esophagitis patient. And in those cases, our EPO, our antibody assay, was able to correctly identify those patients as either GERD or eosinophil esophagitis patients. And then we were able to go ahead and make a, a correct diagnosis. So in summary, can you just tell us what does it all mean? What's the impact of the result of your research in the world of gastroenterology? Well, first off, we have a brand new reagent that previously did not exist. This antibody is available and will be available to our clinical and research colleagues. So we're going to be able to investigate and diagnose patients with eosinophil-associated diseases like eosinophil esophagitis at a level never before. In addition, with the apparent validity of our assay uh, as a diagnostic procedure, we're now going to be able to uh, diagnose patients in a high throughput format with a certain degree of quantitative certainty, uh, certitude. Uh, patients are going to be able to be uh, looked at by uh, clinicians, uh, diagnosed by pathologists uh, in, in a speed and, a, and in a way previously uh, not available or not possible.